Yo, what's up guys, Tens here, back with another video. So this video is going to be about Windows 11 and how to properly install and optimize. Um, there's going to be also a preview of my playbook near the end or at the end, uh, which will showcase you some of the stuff that it does and have. Um, and yeah, so before we begin, you're going to have to download this folder, which is going to be a zip file for you in the description. Download it, extract it, then make sure it's a folder. Then go to the first folder, go ISO links, and now inside the TXT file, you're gonna have two files, uh, two links, I mean. So the first one is gonna be original Windows 11, and then the second one is gonna be original, again, Windows 11, but LTSC version, which is still in beta. Uh, it's not fully released, and it's still being worked on. Um, now, the first one, it's what we're gonna use since I'm gonna do the bot process manually. But if you want to skip that step and already have the bolted windows, then I'll probably recommend going with LTSC version. It also has better timer and performance, but the only downside to it is that it has a lot of bugs, including Nvidia panel, out tabbing, and some other stuff like audio related. But again, feel free to try this one as well. I'm personally going with the normal one so I can do the whole process of the bolt manually for this video. So yeah, copy whatever you're wanting to use. In my case, the normal, then open browser of your choice, paste that link. And then you're going to have three methods over here, the ISO file, the installation media, and the installation assistant. Now, in the description, there will be also a link to a video that showcases you our methods of installing Windows without USB. Um, I'm using the one with hard disk, uh, which make a partition and then use that partition to install it and kind of make like a fake USB. So I'll be going with the third option, which is the ISO file. So in my case, I'll select Windows 11, download now. Then just wait it out. Now for language, you want to select United States, and then you can manually change it inside Windows to whatever language you use, but most people most likely use English anyways. Then just click 60-bit for download. Now I already have it downloaded, so I'm just going to close that, go to downloads, and now I have my folder here. So as I said, I'm using a special method, so I'll just double click that. It's going to open with 7-zip. Now I go to the place that I want to install my Windows, in my case D drive, and then I'll just drag everything inside there. There we go. Now I can close that, then go back to the folder here. Now you're going to have put inside ISO, just open, and you're going to have after an intent file, just copy, paste, then right click and edit with notepad. Now press Ctrl plus F, then find this and type PC. Now look for where it says name over here. You can see name, name. So over here by default, the user account name will be PC. You can change it to whatever you want. In my case, I'll just put Tensu. And then by default, this will skip the whole installation on Windows for you. So whenever you reach the step where you have to select a disk where you want to install Windows, uh, afterwards it's gonna ask you a bunch of bullshit stuff that usually Windows ask. This will skip the whole thing for you as well as bypassing the requirements. So if your system does not meet the TPM check, the RAM check, secure boot or CPU check or storage, this will bypass everything for you and pretty much skip out the bolt bullshit questions that are at the start and just send you straight to the desktop. So save after you change your name. And now you're pretty much good to go and boot into this and then install Windows. So I'll cut the recording here and I'll resume the recording when I'm on the fresh install with after after of course I install OBS otherwise I won't be able to record for you guys but yeah see you there it's been a few days since the first part and the reason behind that is because I've updated the pack and I didn't want to upload a new pack with new stuff in the description but the video showcased the old stuff so therefore I decided to remake the second part of this video so yeah we're back on fresh install. The only things that I've done was install Discord, Epic Games, Steam, OBS, and replace Task Manager with Process Explorer, since I prefer this. It has a little bit more detailed info. But yeah, so let's begin. So first, I'm just gonna real quick change the stuff for this, since I like to personalize this a little bit. So yeah, so as you can see, we're 172 processes. Um, process count does not really matter for gaming as long as there's no bootware running in the background that's consuming RAM usage or CPU usage. In this case, we have a bunch of stuff running in the background still. So 
we are gonna get this number a bit lower but by no means we're gonna go like something crazy like 20 or 30 process because that means that the windows will not be working fine like you still be able to game but the compatibility will be trash and that's not what this video is all about so we're gonna just get this number a little bit lower and overall clean windows and optimize it for gaming so let's begin so as always open the pack go to iso related now you're gonna have this txt file uh, i cannot really open it on recording due to copyright reasons so i'm just gonna hide my obs screen here but what you want to do is open this read what is inside then follow the instructions and then proceed with the video so i'll just hide my screen do it real quick and then resume so i'm opening it <clears throat> i'm copying what's inside following the instructions it's gonna take a few seconds it's almost done and we're done now i'm just gonna unhide there we go now we can go to task icon go to recommended right click it start settings now i personally like to disable everything here just so it does not give me notifications then i'm gonna go to change account settings and i personally like to apply my pfp just gonna close this real quick now we're gonna go to personalize now by default you're gonna have this background which is the default windows now if you want to get one or two frames extra know that it will make a huge difference you can do solid color and then just do whatever color you want i personally don't care about that one or two frames extra so i'm just gonna do my wallpaper then you go personalize back go to colors transparency effect make sure it's disabled uh, Windows covers does not really matter. I like to match my wallpaper, so I'm keeping it this color. Then for choose your mode, it's gonna ask you if you want light or dark mode. Uh, this again does not affect the performance. It's personal choice. I personally prefer dark since it's better for my eyes. So I keep it on dark. Everything else, it's fine. Go on dynamic lightings. Now by default, this is gonna be enabled. I'm gonna disable both of this. Then walk screen, you're gonna have walk screen enabled. Just make sure it's disabled. Start, we've already done it. If you didn't, just uncheck everything here. Then go to apps, go to startup. Now, everything here you want to disable that you don't use. In my case, I don't care about Defender, Update, which is Discord, Terminal, Steam, OneDrive, Edge, Epic Games, and Cortana. The first one I will keep since this is what I use for my microphone noise gate. Other than that, disable everything that I don't want. Then go on gaming, go to game bar, disable game bar, go to game mode. Game mode, I personally don't like it. Graphics, go to change default settings. Then I personally also don't like hacks. Um, you can try using hacks and game mode and see how your games perform. I personally don't like them, but uh, I'm not going to say that I recommend turning it off. Uh, just try for your own PC. If it works fine, then just keep both on. Or you can just check if it's better maybe with hacks on and game mode on. I mean off. Or game mode on and hacks off. Just experiment and see what works better for you. In my case, I prefer both off. Then we're going to close out of that. We go to search. I'm gonna type mouse and my bad I misspelled it. Go to mouse settings, go to additional mouse settings, go to pointer option. Now you want to uncheck and enchant pointer precision like this. And then by default, this should be on the sixth line. If it's not, just do it like this one, two, three, four, five, six. Then apply. Then OK. And you're done with that part. Close that. Then go back, type keyboard. Make sure it's the one with the icon that's white here. Then repeat delay, make sure it's on short. Repeat rate, make sure it's on fast. Now cursor blink rate, if you like it to blink, I guess keep it like this. Otherwise, none. I don't really care, so I just keep it none. Then you want to go to notifications. Now over here, you want to uh, remove everything. Additional settings, uncheck everything as well. 
then you want to uncheck notifications and check do not disturb this way you're not gonna get spammed with notifications then you want to go on the just date and time uh, if you made it to USA ISO, since the first part was showcasing that, you're going to be most likely on central time as well. So you want to change it to whatever time zone you are in, in my case this. Then you want to go to sound, go to more sound settings. Now for this part, my microphone might uh, cut, meaning there will not be any voiceover. In case that happened, just follow my mouse clicks and what I have changed, then once I close this, I will re-enable it in case it did cut. So yeah. So you want to disable devices that are not short. You want to disable disconnected devices and it's going to look like this. Now my monitor has sound built in. I don't really care. So I just disable it. Then my speaker, I like to change the icon to this since I'm using my microphone for my headset. Like I plug my headset inside my microphone since it has a built-in mixer so that's why it's showing speakers so otherwise you're gonna have most likely speakers or like headset just follow the settings enchantments make sure all are disabled advanced make sure it's always on 44,100 sounds disable this apply then communication do nothing apply okay now i'm just gonna reselect my devices just in case they did cut and then advanced audio default there we go you're pretty much with that done with that part now you can close onedrive since we don't really use it with onedrive can close steam you can close epic games and then just wait them out now right click in the empty space that's my settings now you want to disable all these three now for search you can i guess keep it if you want it for visuals i personally don't care about it so i just hide it touch keyboard if you don't use it click on never then taskbar behaviors go back down go to taskbar alignment if you like it on center just keep it I personally like it on left, similar to what Windows 10 look like. Then I just uncheck everything here that I don't really care. I keep the select far corner, which is helpful if you're in a full screen game. Then combine taskbar buttons. I always keep it on always, since I don't want to see the full names. Otherwise, it's going to look like this. So I just keep it on always. Then we close that part. Now we pretty much have half of the stuff now running. Now we're going to go here and open the Windows button. Now we're gonna clean everything inside here that we don't care about. So Edge, unpin, Office, unpin, Outlook, unpin, Photos, unpin, Settings, keep, unpin, Xbox, Solitaire, Spotify, Clipchamp, To Do, Linkend, Calculator, Clock, Notepad, Paint, Snipping. Now we are unchecking them as an icon. We are not uninstalling it. So. If you're worried about that you're reinstalling something here, we are not removing anything. It's just unchecking it from start menu for looks. And then another thing I like is to right click the echo bin and then pin to start. It's gonna come inside here. Then I like to drag it in front and then I do this one over here and then I unpin this since we already have explorer button. And now since we have um, a recycle bin inside start menu, I like to go to teams, then desktop icon settings, and I like to remove it from desktop. Same goes with uh, Edge and other browsers. I like to keep them removed from there. Uh, I also like to pin this one since I don't want it to be here. It's going to go in here. Just delete that one. Uh, pin this one as well. Um, just always make sure that it's going in there because sometimes it might glitch and you're removing the icon and it does not actually go there and then OBS as well there we go and now we have a clean desktop now I'm also going to remove this since I'm not really using store so it looks a little bit more clean there we go now we want to go to settings again make it a little bit bigger go to uh, privacy general now just untick everything speech 
make sure it's unticked. Inking, make sure it's disabled. Uh, diagnostics, make sure it's disabled. Uh, activity history, make sure it's disabled. Search permission, make sure these are disabled. And clear device history. Searching windows, make sure it's disabled. Location, make sure it's disabled if anything here is checked. Now for camera, if you use camera, uh, you can keep it all enabled or like just as it is. I personally don't have camera, so I don't really care about it. Microphone, voice activation, you don't want to touch that. Notifications, you want to disable. Uh, account info, same goes as always. And then everything from here down, you can fully remove, like uncheck without any issues. They don't really cause any problems or you need them. So phone calls, actually gonna make it a little bit bigger. Go history email, don't really care about that. I'm also sorry if you can hear my scroll wheel, it's still broken. Radius. Now this will get removed by the registry scripts that we will be running later on, but just to be fully safe, you want to manually go through them as well. Uh, the notes folder. Documents. The note music library. Pictures. Videos. File system. Then screenshot borders and then the bottom one and we're pretty much fully done with that. There we go. Now we want to go back to the folder. Go to run times. You want to run 7-zip install. Run this. Now we want to go to DirectX, go all the way on the bottom, click as admin, accept, next, next. Now while this is running, we're gonna run this one as well as admin. If anything here pop-ups with error, that means you already have it installed. But if you follow this video and you're on fresh install, you should not have any pop-ups. Now this one will give you a finish button and the other one will just close as you saw. And this one is almost done. Just a few more files. There we go. Now we're gonna go to GPU. Uh, we're gonna go to what GPU you have, so AMD or NVIDIA, in my case NVIDIA. Um, you wanna do DDU, which removes your old driver and any files running. Even if you pre-install, I recommend you running this, even if you just pre-installed and don't have any drivers. But by default, Windows installs the driver that it picks by itself. So you want to remove that driver and install the one that you want. Then once you remove the driver, you want to open MVClean install. Now, I'm not going to showcase you how to do DDU or MVClean install the full installation since it's going to cancel my recording. But you can find tutorial in my Discord group. There's a video for DDU and for MVClean install, there's also pictures, but you can also follow right now the steps that I'm doing. So the newest driver right now, it's dot .94. I have not tested yet this driver. I've tested dot 81 and it performed decently um but you can i guess go with 94 if you really want but i'm not really sure if it's that good yet so the ones that i recommend are dot 81 560.81 or 552.44 or 537.58 and make sure that if you're using every clean install that you always don't know the desktop version and not the studio version otherwise you will have performance issues so let's say that you pick the one that I already have, which is the desktop, .81. Now on this screen, you can select what you want. So let's say I want uh, shadow play. It's gonna say what you need, right? So just click recommended and it's gonna give you the recommended or you can just tick whatever it's saying that it needs for this to work. I personally don't really care about anything uh, over here and I just use the driver. So I just do driver. And then just wait it out. It's almost done. Just 
going to go back one folder and go Nemesis Utility for a second. So this is going to be used in this part. Now over here you want to select Disable Installer, Unintended, Perform Clean Install, Multiplane, Unsell, then Show Export, Disable Driver Telemetry, Disable HDCP, Enable Meshed Signal Interrupts, and then the bottom three ones. Now, if you watch Netflix on browser, you want to uncheck HDCP. If you don't really care about the Netflix, you can keep that checked. And if you encounter any errors during the installation of this driver, then you want to remove the multiplane overlay and unsell. In my case and other times that I've done this driver, I have not seen an issue, but yeah. Now for message signal interrupts, by default, this is what the MSI mode utility does. So if we open the utility, as you can see, if you go to my GPU, it's going to say that MSI is supported, but it's going to be unchecked like this. So instead of you going in this application and doing it, you can actually force it through this, which is really helpful. And that's what I've done. So you want to force it and make sure that the inter priority is on default, which means undefined. You don't want to mess with the other three ones. Usually some people will put it on high or normal. Um, you don't really want to do that. Just keep it default. And then for interrupt policy, you can experiment with our processor in machines. And that's what I've done. But you can also try with default. Um, but for the sake of the video, I'll probably say try with our processors in machine. And then just do next and do the video. And just do the driver and install it. Just gonna wait till the install menu and just gonna close it since I've already installed it. Yep, just go through install process. It's gonna look like a normal driver, it's not looking special. Just install it and then you're gonna be here. Then once you're done, just go to MSI mode utility. It's gonna say no access, just make sure you always run it as admin. There we go. Now over here, you're gonna have devices that say that are MSI supported. So as you can see, line based MSI, MSI X, that means that they're supported MSI. So in my case, my high definition audio controller is not ticked, but it does support MSI. I'm just going to tick it. And then everything here on the right side where the undefined is, if it says anything high, just set it to undefined as well. And it should look like that. And then apply. Now, some devices, for example, the PCI Express routes might say that they don't have anything here, which is normal. Um, usually you don't want to enable MSI mode to devices that does not say that they support it. But in reality, if they have negative IRQ, you can still enable MSI on them. But that's for testing. Like you can try out enabling MSI on these devices as well. But again, that's really up to you if you want to do that. I'm not gonna bother. But if the IRQ S is negative, that means you can try MSI as well. Even if it does not support it over here. So as we saw, we just done undefined on everything here, apply, exit, and you're done with that part. Now in NVIDIA, you have optional registry values. So if you installed the driver normally without the MVClean install, you can just run this and it's going to remove the telemetry. Then you want to go to Dwarfs. You want to disable HDCP. Again, as I said, if you want Netflix or watch Netflix, don't do this step with HDCP. In my case, I don't do that. So I disable HDCP and I also like to disable Wogging. And both of these can be reverted as you can see there's reverts. So yeah, then go back and then we have tweaks. Now over here, you want to run these tweaks in order. So run this as admin. Some of them might give you error, which is fine. Don't really matter or cause any issues. That's done. Then these ones are regulated files, so just run them. And then run the visuals, then continue, then open the CMD one, then copy this. Then just follow the instruction, Windows plus R, settings, and you're gonna have this screen. Now over here, you want to select edges for best performance, and then manually select smooth edges of screen fonts, and then show thumbnails instead of icons, apply. It's gonna flicker for a second, your screen. Then go on advanced, then go on change. Now. By default, Windows automatically manages the paging file size, which is fine. Like you don't really have to mess with this, but in case you want to mess with this, you want to uncheck, select the drive where your Windows is installed, in my case, C drive. 
then go to custom size. Now initial size, you want to put it on recommended, in my case 4946. And then for the maximum size, you want to open calculator. Now you want to type how much gigabytes of RAM you have. In my case, I have 32. If you have 8 or 16, you can just type 8 or 16 and then follow the steps. In my case, I have 32. Then you do X, which is multiply by 10, 24. One gigabyte, it's equal to 1024 megabytes. So that's what we did. So 30 time, 32 X, that amount equals of that much. Then you want to copy this amount and then multiply that by 1.5 and you get the number 49,000. So this is the amount that I have to put inside the maximum size. Now, if you have, let's say eight gigabytes of RAM, you do eight X one zero 24, and then you get this amount. Then you multiply that by 1.5 and that's your maximum size. If you have 16, you do the same process, but again with 16. Then multiply by 1.5 and that's the amount you get. Then you just do set like this. Then okay, it's gonna say that you need to restart. Just restart manually after. But as I said, you can do automatically manage as well. It's totally fine. But if you want to do it with mano, this is how you do it properly. So just mano, apply, apply, okay, and then restart later. And you're done with that part. Now you want to go to, again, tweaks folder. Now you're gonna have timer resolution. Now, if you go to timer tester, it's gonna give you this. As you can see right now, the timer resolution is on one MS, which is the Windows default, but the sleep timer resolution is about 15 to 16 MS. So you want to lower that and to do that, you need to apply the fix, which is, you can see it right here. You can edit it. It applies global time resolution request to one, which will make it that the resolution that Windows is using is 1MS, but the sleep will also be the amount that it's supposed to be instead of 15 and 16. That's what was fixed in Windows 11 and Windows 10 actually have problem with because on Windows 10, even if you apply it, it will still remain saying that it's 15 or 16. While on Windows 11, the time resolution is actually fixed. So it will display the amount that's correct. In this case, 1MS. So you want to double click this? Yes. And then once you restart, and if you run this test, it's going to say over here 1MS or almost 2MS, about 2MS. It's not going to be 15 or 16 anymore. And if you want to lower this even lower to get even better latency and mouse view, we're going to do the following. We're going to get these two files, copy them, then paste them on the desktop. We're going to go to this PC, go to C drive. Uh, I'm going to remove the Perfox folder since it just works. I don't really care about that. Then you're going to have VXC and then you're going to have shortcut of VXC. So you want the EXC, not the shortcut in the C drive. It's going to ask you if you want to do that. Continue. That's done. Then do Windows plus R. Then go to startup, shell, two dots, start up, then just drag that in. Now, by default, if you right click it, uh, I've made it so it's running on 5060 70 instead of one MS. So this is about half an MS. Now, the standard values, which are really decent, will be 67 and 70. So just like that. But I'm going to leave it on 67. Um, you can experiment with going higher or lower to see if the last number will change in the latency. And what I mean by the last number will be, let me just go to tweaks, timer resolution, timer tester. So what we really care about is the sleep timer. So as you see, the normal one almost spiked to two, which is the normal value. And then it just keeps on going, but so once this end, it's going to give you, as you can see, STDEF and then average is 14. So if you apply the fix and you set this, it will say the average is about that number, which is 067. So have an MS. So what you want to do is lower or increase this number in order to get better STDEF and average. 
but I'm not gonna showcase you like the whole process of like finding the perfect number. There's tutorials online and there's also explanation on my playbook posting stuff folder if you really wanna find that value. But for the sake of the video, 50, 60, 70 is a really good start. You don't really have to touch it anymore. And again, you can just do the fix, which will make the timer 1ms and you don't have to bother with set timer resolution at all. But if you want to get under 1ms, then that's where set timer resolution comes in play. Otherwise, just the timer fix and then restart works just fine for Windows 11. But if you want the timer, then you use that. Then you're pretty much done with that part. Then you want to go to optional. Now, if you follow the afternoon 10 file and you didn't change the name, then most likely here will be PC. The name will be PC. If you want to change that, just right click that as admin, then type whatever name you want, enter, and then whenever you restart or switch user, your name will apply. That's just for pure visuals, does not really matter. Then you want to remove the side stuff that I personally don't like them. Now, this is fully optional. As you see, it's an optional folder. I like to remove the home icon, uh, network icon, and then quick access. And then I also like to remove the gallery, which is in registry. So I'm just gonna go and then just gonna delete this key. There we go. So now if I copy this and I close it and I open my export again, as you can see, it's fully clean now. And I like to remove music since I don't really care and pictures. And that's how I keep my explorer cleaner pretty much. Then we go back. Then you have start is back, which I'm not going to showcase. It's again, just an optional if you want to make your windows look, I guess, more cleaner. Then you want to go to your local disk, which is your windows, go to properties and then uncheck this, then apply. Okay. Continue, ignore all and just let it finish. Now this will take a while depending on how much use space you have. In my case, I got 50 gigabytes. If you have games installed on this drive, it's going to take a while for sure, but it's worth the while, the wait time. So just wait it out. In the meantime, we're going to proceed the other stuff. So we have browser. So we have Brave and Chrome. By default, Windows comes with Microsoft Edge. So we're going to remove Microsoft Edge real quick. Microsoft Edge remover. And we're going to look for GitHub version, which is this. And then we want to remove Edge and WebView since we don't really need them. Now for this to not get any issues, you want to disable your virus protection. We're going to remove Defender anyways at the end since it causes performance loss. Um, if you really want antivirus, just install a third party, don't bother with Windows Defender. Then just going to right click that. Just let it do it think. And as you can see, Edge, now it's removed. It does not exist anymore. It's going to give error on some parts. It's fine. Just delete that now gonna delete these two as well since I've already applied them. Then you can pick whatever you like. In my case, I like Brave. Just gonna install Brave. Just wait for the install. I'm also gonna unpin Microsoft Store. Set as default, skip, maybe later. Uncheck this. And you're pretty much inside. Now you want to close it. Then run this as it says, admin, run anyways, done. Then open again, drag it here, pin it, then remove the icon, then go to settings. And I'll just copy my settings to the bot, the browser fully. So just untick everything here. The notes is fine. Language, you want to uncheck. Then remove English and keep United States. After fill, you want to remove after fill and address bars. Then go to extensions, make sure these are unchecked. Search engine, make sure it's on Google. Manage search engine and then remove the ones that you can without removing Google. Then deactivate. Go to sync, should be fine. Leo, make sure it's disabled. Clear Leo data as well. Web3. Uh, don't really need to touch anything. Privacy and security, you want to remove Tor and automatically send dial usage to Brave. You don't really care about it either. 
and you're pretty much done with this one as well. Shoots, I personally like to remove Facebook and Twitter ticket over here since I don't really use them. Then here is fine. Appearance, I like to keep it on dark. Show home button, I like to make it to Google. Show bookmarks button, you can keep it or disabled. Bookmarks, I like to never. Brave news, and all of this over here, I like to disable. And then pretty much everything here is fine. Then go to get started. I like to open a specific page, then again Google. New tab page, I like to put it to home page. And then profile name and icon, I like to type whatever name you want over here, then dark, and then dark again. And you're pretty much good with the browser settings. Now, you want to get ubook origin. Make sure you always go to the original website, don't download from the Chrome or GitHub or anything else, just the original website always. Then you want to get the first one, not the second one, just the first one. Add to Brave, add execution. It's gonna add over here. Then just click this and then pin it. That's what I like. Now Brave by default comes with uBlock, but again, I like to combine it. So yeah, that's my setting. So box CCP reports, team dark, disable two tips, disable cosmetic filtering, filter list. Then in filter list, I like to disable the cookies, the social and the annoyance. I like to disable all of them. Then I go on to the top. Ignore generic cosmetic filters, apply changes. Then I like to get 7 TV, which is a plugin for Twitch, YouTube and Kick, so you can see emotes. This is optional, you don't really need this, it's just that I like to view the emotes that they spam in chat sometimes, so that's why I'm gonna add this one as well, otherwise you don't really need that or are required to use this. Then done. And you're pretty much good, like your browser is aborted. The process over here also finished. So just press OK. I'm going to go back and now we're going to go to the default. Now you want to open this, copy this command that's given and open PowerShell, paste. Uh, it's going to ask you that you want to run as admin. That's fine. Just go to terminal then and just run it over there. Just let it do not sync and you're gonna have this menu. Now, this option is fully optional. You can use Geek only and no bother with this. I'm gonna combine both of them, so yeah. So go to Twix, then Snap Windows, I don't care about, Snap Assistant, Snap Assist, Sticky Keys, Show Hidden Files, Bing Search, uh, all of this I don't really care. Then Delete Temporary Files, I'm just gonna do Standard. Game DVR, Teredo, yes, 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 yes. The voltage, we don't really care since we removed it. Uh, Sable, Microsoft copy, I would check that. Set classic right click. And you're pretty much remove first store point, delete temporary files, I don't like to do that. Then run all shut up, 10. It's gonna open that, go to actions, apply recommended. Yes. Okay, close, okay. It's gonna ask you for a start, click close. Then scroll down, you can scroll down, then run to X. Now your screen might flash again, since it's gonna restart Explorer at the end, which is totally fine. Just let it out. It's running right now in the background, as you can see. Once it's finished, it's gonna tell you that it's finished. Or it's not gonna start moving at all, so it just restarted. Recording is still running, right? Yes. And tweaks are finished, so you can close that. And it also frits some space. You can close that. Now, go back, right click now, it's normal. Uh, we're gonna go to debot and we're gonna run geek. Now, from here, you want to follow my steps. So, OneDrive, I don't really use it. I'm gonna do force remove, yes. And the nice thing about this app is that it actually digs rigid files as well. So it fully cleans it out of your system. So as you can see, it really found everything for it. Just finish, close. And now we don't have OneDrive. Then we go to Microsoft Store Apps. Now I personally don't use calculator, so I'm just gonna remove that. Now the stuff that I'm removing, 
if you don't need them as well feel free to copy my settings otherwise if you need something from what i'm removing just keep it and don't touch it but in my case i'm removing pretty much almost everything except the store since that's what most people use but yeah clip jump we don't really need it clock we don't really need it cortana feedback hub get help local bridge maps uh, microsoft news microsoft to do now for movies and tv and media player this is pretty much media players now by default i'll probably remove both of them and install vlc which is a third party media player but in case you want to use the built-in movie player so the movies and tv one it's the old one which is the built-in in windows and then media player is again built-in in windows but it's the new version i personally prefer the old version so i'm just gonna remove the media player one but as I said, I usually remove both of them and just install VLC from browser. Paint, don't really care about paint. But if you use it, I guess keep it. People, we don't care about that. There we go. Power Automate, remove that. Now for photos, you can also use the classic photo viewer. So we can remove this, but for the sake of the video, I'll just keep it in case you don't know how to force the old one. And I'm not really showcasing you how to force the old photo viewer, but yeah. Snippet too, you can keep solitaire collection. We don't care about that. If you use the windows for like work and stuff, you can keep sticky notes as well, but I don't really use it for this. So I'm just gonna remove that. Terminal, we don't care about that. We have CMD. Terminal is pretty much like PowerShell and CMD combined. We don't really care. Tips, we don't care. Voice recorder, we don't need. I mean, why would you want that? You have legit OBS and other applications that you can use. Weather, we don't care about that. And then Windows widgets, I like to remove that as well. And then your phone. And then close. And you're pretty much done. Like we removed pretty much everything that we don't need anymore. Now we're gonna go back. We're gonna go to tweaks again, go to registry, then open this. Just gonna make it a little bit bigger. Now we're gonna go to win plus R, rec, edit, then scroll all the way down, I mean up, and then close out that and go to computer. Now just copy the paths and then paste. Now win32 priority, you have 38 and 22. So it's decimal always. So 38 decimal will equal to 26, which is the balance point, And it will work pretty good for our systems. 22, it's kind of like more latency prioritization. I personally like 22, so I'll do 22 instead which is 16 then we're gonna go to the second path then over here by default you're gonna have different values since we run Chris utility it already set this for us to 8 F's and 0 which is also what I have in the guide or you can try 0 and A um, 0 and A will kinda give you better latency like mouse feel I should say uh, but feel free to try 8Fs and 0 as well. It might be different from system to system. I personally use 0 and A on my main PC, but for the sake of the video, I'll keep it to 8Fs and 0. Then for this one, I want to go to this one, which is the game spot. It's already set it as well, which is 8, 6, high, high. And it's in order, 8, 6, high, high. Then you want to go to this one, which is direct 3D. Now, by default, you might have here max pre-render frames or should not have it. If not, just copy the name 
Now, this is similar to what NVIDIA Profile Inspector have, which you can set the pre-render frames, with one being the lowest, meaning you have the best latency, or if you go higher, you have less, better latency, but more FPS. Now, if you know you have decent CPU and you don't have any issues, you can experiment with this value. Otherwise, I would not really do this, but feel free to try it. So what you want to do is make a dwarf and make sure it's named max pre-render frames then value one now try it out if it does not work good for you just go back to this path and then just right click it and delete the path then we go to this one and then you want to find attributes and it's gonna be zero by default just set it to one then you wanna find this one type class and now use the arrows and find something that says display so we're looking for display, display. There we go. As you can see, it says display here. Then expand it, click on 00, zero and it should have your GPU. If it has your GPU names here, then you're in the correct folder. Then over here, you want to make disable dynamic P state. Right click, dwarf, disable dynamic P states, and make sure it's on one. Then you want. I accidentally clicked stop. <laughs> So we're gonna resume from where we were. So now we're over here. Now, by default, if you go to edit PowerPoint, we have few options here. So in my case right now, we are using the balance since we have not touched it. You want it on a high performance or you can use ultimate performance, which again, ultimate performance is same as high performance. You just renamed bullshit. But I guess if you wanna do that, just do CMD and then paste. And now if you go back, gonna have ultimate performance then change turn off display make sure it's never never save and you have ultimate performance you can close out that now we are pretty much done with most of here i think just making sure that we did not skip anything okay so now we have gpu irq so i'm not sure who made this file uh, it was sent to me, but it will save me time since it's automatically finding it. So what this do is pretty much find your GPU, uh, IRQ, and it says the affinity or the priority, I should say. So this can either cause performance increase and better latency, or it can do the negative side, which is decrease the performance and increase the latency. In my case, I'm just going to run into admin. And in case you want to find where is this changing the stuff, you want to go to here and I believe it was in win priority if I'm not mistaken yep so it's this over here pretty much changes the priority over here and you're gonna have IRQ24 priority or whatever name it is if you remove it if I go back again optional and I run this again if I switch, there you go, it's back. So this is how you remove it. If you want to remove it, just go to priority control and then remove anything else except Windows 32 priority and convertible state mode. Then you want to go to Discord and Spotify. So have my Discord open. So you want to do the best settings for it first. So game overlay, make sure it's disabled. Smile never only while speaking. Hicks. Register games, make sure everything is unticked. Activity privacy, it's normal. Advanced, make sure hardware acceleration is disabled. It's gonna restart Discord. Go back. Uh, streamer mode, I like to disable sounds since I wanna be able to hear. Windows settings, uncheck this. Uh, Keybinds, I don't really use keybinds, so I disabled it. Voice and video, make sure it matches your settings. I like to set it to this and then 95 my microphone my speaker and then over here from down below you want to disable everything don't really want anything and the most important one is this one which actually sends stuff to discord and it uses your network so you want to disable this if you want to have better ping it might increase your i mean it might decrease your ping by one or two ms then if you have clips enabled as well, disable. From here, you want to go to 
you're gonna have a folder with Discord and Spotify. You just wanna open Discord, read me, then copy this link, then go to it. And then you wanna go on install for Discord stable. Open, close, close that, close that. Now this is fully optional. You don't really have to do it if you don't want to. Then run Zadmin, run anyway. It might say it's a virus or something like that, it's just because it's a bad file. It's gonna close your Discord, it's just gonna open it by default. And it's gonna pop up with a message. Now, I've already installed it um, beforehand, so it's not really showing anything. But it's gonna pop up with a message saying that you're in performance mode. Just click close to it and you're pretty much good to go with Discord. You don't really need anything else. Then. You have Spotify, so if you want Spotify for free and you don't want to pay for premium or, or stuff like that, just go to this link and then download the zip, port team and go in like a normal Spotify and you don't have ads. Then you have Bufferboard, so you want to go to that. Go to Waveform and then just run a test. By default, this is gonna be the download and the upload is gonna be high for me since I have not tweaked my network adapter which we're gonna do like the basic stuff just to, like fix it a little bit but this is also a really important stuff in your gaming experience so as you can see buffer bot can actually increase your latency and how your overall gaming experience feel so that's why you always want to have low uh, buffer bot for gaming and what we care about is the jitter pretty much the jitter and the buffer bot now I think it might actually not run since I need to reinstall and update the driver, which we're actually gonna do. So we're gonna go to device manager. Gonna minimize that. Now wanna go to network. My bad, network. You want to disable the one mini ports, we don't really need them. They're useless. Disable, disable. Disable, 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 and then double click your internet adapter. Go to advanced. Now, my adapter is missing settings, which means I need to update it. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. Browse my computer. You might as well do the same thing, like update it to the latest version if you have one available. I already have my adapter driver downloaded, which is the latest one. There we go. This one. I missed it, let me just save it. There we go. Then you want to go to power management, make sure both are checked. Go on advanced, and now as you can see, we have energy efficiency, make sure it's off. Wake settings, disabled. And reduce speed on power down, disabled. Now, I'm not gonna show the other settings. Um, they're already in my playbook. Um, I don't feel like going through all of them again, but that's are pretty much the basic settings for the power savings that we just disabled and you're good to go. Then from here you want to go to software devices. Uh, you want to disable both of these since we don't really need them. Then if you don't use printer, you want to disable this ones over here as well under printer or print cures. Then you want to go to system devices and I like to disable high precision. NDSS and then on the bottom I like to disable system speaker and I like to disable also high definition now if you disable high definition or system speaker you might lose audio if you don't lose audio then feel free to turn them both off they're useless then go to uh, actually never mind don't go to <laughs> I like to disable our letter so if you have it then disable it as well otherwise just keep it out uh, and that's pretty much, I'm not going through the other stuff, um, since I don't want to go in depth too much. Then you want to go to mice, power management, make sure that power management options are unchecked. For the hit devices. There we go. Unchecked. And for disk drive, I like to uncheck, I mean check, turn off Windows right cage. And you're pretty much good to go with these settings over here. Now you want to right click again, network and internet settings, advanced network, go to your adapter, go to more adapter settings. 
Now over here, I like to disable everything except QoS packets and Internet Protocol version 4. Also disabling Protocol version 6 can actually make your ping better. So uncheck it as well if you have it. Then click OK, then go back, go to network again, version 4 protocol. Advanced, wins, make sure it's disabled NetBIOS and then enable ML host is unchecked. OK, OK. Okay, then go back in, go to configure, make sure power management is unchecked. There we go. We're good to go with that settings. Now we want to go back to this, go to buffer boot. And now it should theoretically load in without any issues. Hopefully. Okay, the first part is done. Now it's warming up the second part. Now, in case this does not start moving, then it's just a bug on my end. It's not on your end. I'll just apply the CMD for the after tuning, anyways. So, yeah. But by default, this should be within 10 ms and then the port should be over 100 ms since it's like default configuration. And then once you do the tuning, it should be like either double zeros or like lower amount than what it was before. And if you want to get this lower, then you have to just play with your adapter settings and in general or invest in a better external card. So it's not moving for me. So I'm just going to go back, go to CMD, copy this, then CMD, net interface TSP show global. And now if you, oh, it's moving, never mind. Okay, so just stop hello, oh well. Okay, just going to wait it out real quick. Okay, it's almost done. This number should be over 100. Okay, 60, not bad. So technically I have buffer bot right now since these two numbers are up and not really low amount as this one. And you can see my jitter is 1ms, 15ms and then 30ms which is really bad. And you can see my grade is C even though I have fiber. So we did the first command over here. And as you can see, my after tuning level right now, it's on normal, which is normal speeds. And by that, I mean full speed of what my internet is capable of, which is one gigabyte. And to fix buffer bot, we're just gonna do after tuning disabled. So just do that, copy, then net disable. It's gonna ask for admin. So just admin, it's annoying. Okay, CMD run as admin, there we go. Now if we restart it, it's gonna be half speed, but the buffer bot should be nearly gone. So as you can see, my max speed actually dropped a little bit. Now this was higher before. Now, as you can see, it's within two to three MS, which is decent. The perfect value will be zero, zero. And then whatever the first one, if you can get it low as well, would be nice. In my case, four is somewhat okay. And then these two, you want to have to the lowest possible. So we got two in this one, which is really decent. And as you can see, we went from like 60 to two as well. So this is going to be great A now, pretty much. And you can see one MS, one MS, one MS, which is insanely good considering we were on what, like 15 to 30, as you can see, we got the max grade. So that's pretty much the good result we wanted. And we're done with the buffer board part. You want to go to device now? 
go to device select all and then once you select it all you want to remove it in my case for some reason it's not showing remove there we go you just have to run it as admin and then go to gpu now go back to nvidia go to profile inspector then open your nvidia panel now i'm gonna end the recording here and restart it just in case it groups again at this part we're back so if you have g-sync you want to uncheck it then go and change the resolution make sure that it's the maximum possible refresh rate you can have or your monitor supports my case 240 apply then for this i don't really touch it for covers uh adjust image make sure it's on performance it's going to be on quality set it to performance then make it to advanced 3d go to configure surround and physics make sure it's on your gpu then adjust desktop cover setting make sure it's checked um if you use digital vibrance i guess you can keep it for personal test uh, i've noticed a little i mean not a little but like a slight latency decrease from not using this but again it's personal choice i personally use my monitor for covers so i have it checked otherwise you can keep it unchecked and just play with over digital vibrance you want then i go to adjust desktop size and position you want it on no scanning if you play full screen always if you use stretch you want to have it on full screen and then perform scaling on you want to have it always on display you don't want it on gpu never unless you don't have the option similar to what i have right now this monitor does not support display scaling so have it on gpu uh, and then adjust video cover settings i don't touch that adjust video image settings you want it on nvidia nvidia and then the interlacing you want it unchecked and then apply and then by default you're gonna have the notification tray icon i personally don't like it for looks and i like to keep my taskbar a little bit more clean so i just uncheck it so it's hide it and then you can see i can still open panel just fine then you want to select no R bar or R bar. So if you have a 30s or I mean a 30 or 40 series GPU, you want that. If you have anything under 30 series, you want no R bar. In my case, I don't have a 30 series or 40 series right now. So I select no R bar and just drag it in. If I'm on my 4090, I use R bar. But as I said, we're not, so we're just using no R bar. Then go back. We've done this now over here if you install the driver without the MVClean install you want to run this you can still run it regardless if you run it it just removes the telemetry then for dwarfs we've already explained it um hgcp if you use watch netflix on browser you want to not touch hgcp otherwise you can just check it does not really matter and disable logging check it or if you want to revert any of this just follow the revert folders then go back down and we're pretty much done with most stuff over here then you want to go to services.msc expand it a little bit then scroll all the way to the bottom windows update make sure it's stopped give it a little bit of time And make sure it's on disabled. Then I personally like to disable search as well since I don't really use it. Then defender should be running. We're gonna remove that. It's okay. Then over here we might have um, game DVR. I like to set it to disable just in case. Um, anything else? Put it. It's already on manual from the Chris utility. So we're fine. I'm not really gonna go in depth of disabling a lot of services either, since I want contability. But we are pretty much done here. Um, you can disable workstation as well if you really want it. I'm not gonna do that. But we're good to go over here with that part now we want to open that and we want to go to windows defender remover and we look for the github version we go to latest and we don't know this again 
it's gonna say it's a virus, which is fine. We'll download history. Uh, download dangerous file, download dangerous file. Close. Go to downloads. Open that. Run anyway. And this will fully remove Defender and its mitigations, which we don't really need. Then at that point, after you remove it and PC restarts, you're gonna have all the stuff that we done applied, as well as you no know, Defender. You want to either stay like that without antivirus and just don't download stuff that you don't know what they do or just visit sites that are unsafe. And that will give you the best possible experience while gaming. Or you can just download a third party antivirus and call it a day. But you will be losing a slight performance. So that's fully up to you. I personally don't use any antivirus since I know what I'm doing and I don't really do anything crazy or don't want anything shady. So yeah, so over here you want to press Y. Once you press Y, it's gonna remove everything. Then it's gonna say that it's gonna restart in 10 seconds. It's gonna restart your full PC and you're gonna be back with pretty much the bolded version. So right now, as you can see, we are after everything that we've done. I'm just gonna wait a few seconds for it to load. There we go, we are at 143. Then once we restart, it's gonna be way lower. And then well, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna restart, then I'm gonna be back and we're gonna do Steam and Epic Games. And then pretty much that's for the video. So let's go. So I'm just gonna press Y. It's gonna start removing stuff. And right near the timer, I will just pause the recording and restore it. As you can see, it's restarting now. Just gonna end and then the restart. We're back after the restart. And if you open Task Manager, just give it a few seconds for it to load fully. It's a little bit slower than normal Task Manager, but it does a better job than the actual Task Manager, at least for me. And as you can see, we are at 63, which is totally fine for gaming and normal usage. Everything will still work. We're still gonna have pretty much Bluetooth support, a Windows Store, and all that bullshit still working. We didn't strip anything out. And again, as I said, process count does not really matter as long as it's not bot that's running in the background that's consuming your usage of your system resources. So in this case, we removed everything that can actually use system resource and it's causing us to lose performance that everything else is removed. And the only thing that's using right now is the Windows stuff that are running, which are needed for compatibility and in general for Windows to work properly. We're not removing or stripping further than this, anything. And in this case, I'm good to go and go to downloads and remove most of the stuff that we downloaded. I also gonna install my Wogitech GitHub application. I'm using an older version since the newer version has a little bit more bot and it also makes my microphone, like it touches the settings of my microphone, which I don't like. So I always use an older version from 2021. But there's no difference between like the newer or the, the one that I'm using right now, in case you're wondering. It's just personal preference. And these are my settings if you have Wojtech devices. So I like to disable updates, um, notifications, and low games and application to control. I don't really care. I like to go to desktop integration and I disable all the integrations since I don't really care about them either. And that's pretty much what I do. Like that's about it. Don't really touch anything else and then close it. And the reason why I use GitHub for my mouse is because I play MMO games on my main PC, on my main system, I should say. And I use the side buttons for binds and sometimes to put macros for like PVP skills. And that's the only reason why I use GitHub. Otherwise, I recommend you using onboard memory if you use Wogitech stuff or applications, I should say. But yeah, otherwise, that's it. And as you can see, we jumped a few process count as well just because of the GitHub process bot. That's why you want onboard since it's gonna use only one device or one processor, I should say, more. Now, I'm gonna remove this icon as well. Now we're gonna open Steam since that's what we're gonna optimize. And then we're gonna do Epic Games and we're done with the video pretty much. Now we're gonna open Steam, go to Steam, go to settings. 
Now go to friends and chat. Over here, it's personal choice if you want to touch anything. I personally don't like to remember chats or disable. I like to disable spell check and disable animated room effects. I don't really care about that. Um, pretty much enable animated avatars. I like to disable that. Then notifications. Uh, you can disable them if you really want. I don't really like notifications. Interface. I like to disable everything. And make sure you click start later. I like to keep notify for games and updates. Uh, library. I like it on small. And then low bandwidth, low performance and disable community. I like to keep it on. And then ready to play showing cool streamable games. I like to disable that. Don't really care. Downloads. Make sure it's on your region or whatever it's closest to your region if it does not exist. Throttle downloads while streaming. Make sure it's unchecked. Then go to storage, that's fine. Quad, it's fine. In-game, I like to disable the overlay. Don't really use it. Then if you go a little bit down, you're gonna have server, browser, pings, and my notes. You want this on 3000. Then controller, I don't use controller, so I disable that as well. And pretty much anything that I can disable here or put it to whatever the lowest is. For voice, again, I don't really speak through Steam, so I like to, to push to talk, disable that, off, then show, and I like to disable this feature since they consume CPU usage, even if you don't really use them. Remote play, I don't use it, so I disable it. Broadcast, don't really use it, so broadcast disabled. Music, I like to disable, and you're pretty much good with Steam. Now you just close it and reopen it as a normal Steam. And now the settings are applied and you're good to go with that. Then we open Epic Games. Now for Epic Games, similar, just go to your profile, settings. You want to uncheck everything. There we go, everything is unchecked. And I personally like to put throttle the notes on and on zero, which is unlimited. Now, both ways this will work regardless. Like if you uncheck it, it will still use your maximum potential speed. But I personally like it like this. Sometimes it actually glitches the epic launcher, that's why I keep it on this, so it actually uses the maximum speed always. And that's pretty much what you use for the epic launcher. Now for the games, obviously the only game that I play here is Fortnite. So select your Fortnite, let's say you're installing it freshly, since this video is on fresh install. You want to disable after update, you want to disable the shortcut, go to option. Now over here, you're going to have to wait for the Eguard storage to finish, as you can see, 64 gigabytes. You want to check hide resolution, wait for it to change the size, then direct to off shaders, again, wait for it to change size. Then pre-download streamed assets, make sure that's checked. Then everything else, just uncheck, apply, and install. Then once that's starting, it's going to pop up with another message here. There we go, just press X. Delete where we type fourth, if you have a lot of games. And go and start and just keep it like this don't go on this library otherwise your system or cpu i should say will render all the icons over here that are visible in this case that's two four eight icons that are visible and this will be similar to what if you watch your pink text inside the game will be so you don't really want to render this stuff anyways so just keep it on installed only and it's downloading with the maximum speed as you can see Otherwise, it will be half the speed if you don't have throttle when the browser glitches itself. And for the best in-game settings, I already have a video on my channel about that. Um, it's the same, nothing changed. Just go and follow and watch that video. And you'll be pretty much good to go. Like, I mean, there's nothing really anything else that you can do or like I would have touched. Like, this is pretty good startup. Or... If you want to optimize further your PC, just go to my Discord and you're going to have something called a playbook, which you can find over here. There we go. Just want to go to that. Go to download. Click cancel on this for the log attached message. Download this. Download. Yep. It's going to do that. It's done. I'm going to pause or end the recording. I mean, the downloading since I don't really need it then go to downloads then playbook open with 7-zip drag this to files on the desktop you can also extract it if you really want 
so be easier. Then you want to run I'm a wizard as admin. Just let it. It's gonna look like this. Then drag the mob OS beta inside. It's gonna say it's unverified, and the reason behind that is because I have not paid for their service. It requires some monthly payments for it to be a verified playbook. Um, currently, there's not a lot of users that are using my playbook, so I don't see a reason behind paying a monthly subscription for something that is not really being used that much. But if this ends up being used a lot, I will definitely pay for the verification so it looks more safe. Then click next. It's going to ask you for security, but if you follow this video, we already don't have Defender, so you don't really care about the security. Now, this runs on specific versions of Windows, which you can find in the Discord group. You can see it runs on 7.7.19, 20, 22, 22, 26. And to check that, you press Win plus R, then type Win, ver. And as you can see, we are on 22.631, which is this one. And it's supported. So therefore, requirements are met. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to install this playbook. It's going to give you a message. Now, over here, you want to click on Select Options. Now, we already have the browsers installed, but you do Brave. And you can remove pretty much everything what we've done. This playbook will automatically do it for you. And it also includes extra regedit or I should say registry tweaks, which will help even further your performance. It also has a post install with even more stuff that are explained on how to get even more performance out of your system. So that's why I recommend you using the playbook if you really want the best possible performance and just do a fresh install and just do the playbook. You can skip the whole video pretty much that way. Now, if you use Valorant or I should say you play Valorant, you want to skip DEP, uh, dark mode, disable transparency, legacy contest, legacy photo viewer, as we speak about this, this will force it. And then you're gonna get the wallpaper as well, which is the custom one. Printer, if you don't use it, I don't use bootloader printer. Next, again, it's gonna ask if you use 7-zip or anything else, I use 7-zip. If you want Epic Games and stuff like that to come pre install so you don't have to manually install it, I already have it, so I'm not gonna bother. You can get Discord through here as well. And also, if you're watching this video on already installed Windows and not on a fresh install, you can apply this playbook even on a custom OS or already installed Windows. It does not have to be fresh. This will manually tweak everything for you. It does not delete files. Therefore, if you have apps or files installed, this will not touch them by any means. This just manages the system settings. So pretty much changes system settings and install the apps that you've selected within the post option that we just did. It does not do anything else. It does not delete files. It does not remove apps or anything like that. It just removes the Windows components that are called Botware that we removed already in this video. So yeah, everything else will be kept. Store, uh, you have the option to pick it if you want to keep it or remove it. And this will pretty much drop your Botware even lower. So if we had 67 right now on stock, this should drop you to like 50 something or 60. And it also has some extra stuff within the post install that can drop you even lower if you don't care about compatibility and just want poor gaming performance. It can drop down to like 35 or 40. But as I said, it will break a lot of the Windows components, so it's mainly recommended just for programming. Otherwise, just use the playbook as it is right now, like the settings that I just did, and just keep store pretty much, and you're pretty much good to go. It will do everything that we just did in the video even better. So once this playbook finishes, it's gonna ask you that, it's gonna say that it's gonna restart your system, within 10 seconds, similar to what the Windows Defender remover did. And yeah, so that's where I'm gonna end the recording and call it a day. Actually, I will restart and just go to the desktop so you can see what it added and then I'll call it a day. So it's installing, as you can see the Visual CCP, the DirectX, everything that we did already. It's doing it for you, so you don't have to do anything. And now, since we already did it, it's not gonna cause any errors, it's just overwriting it, which is fine. It's also doing device manager tweaks, like um, disabling some devices that you don't really want. And these are devices that I also didn't showcase in this, but you can find them in my old videos. 
also this playbook will be getting updated very very soon with more stuff and more stuff i'm working on it constantly so yeah i'm gonna end here and then come back once we're done we're back after the installation and as you can see we're pretty much good to go like if you go to task manager everything is pretty much still the same notifications might be um, not fully disabled yet so just go notification and just tick this everything else is already set up the search icon will appear since i let it stay there and everything else is pretty much fine as you can see we're on 70 services 68 which is the same amount that we had after we debuted it um we can delete these two files since we're done with them and you can have post install and you have the wallpaper which means you're successful after the installation now the only thing that might happen is that you might lose your network and that's due to the reason that the tweaks um your adapter didn't like the tweaks for the network since this also tweaks your network and to do that just download your driver or if you already had it downloaded just reselect it and reinstall it i also mentioned this in the discord group it's already mentioned um so you want to always do that let me just hide my screen real quick since i need to have to go to private files for the directory don't really want to leak anything there we go so you just uh install the driver and you're pretty much good to go like that's it for the video like you're pretty much done uh post install we have the same stuff that we have even more stuff you have tweaks as you can see we have after gpu affinity bio settings browser crosshair crew device manager discord 5m fortnite configs gp overclock mitigation network adapter obs related services spotify timer win32 and then we have support which is for like the windows stuff in case you want to disable something like out tap anti-cheat bluetooth clipboard defenders printing troubleshoot quick access and stuff like that and as i said i'm updating this playbook pretty much not daily but like at least once every week or two maybe a month and i'm just adding more stuff that i find useful for me that can be beneficial to other people but yeah this is pretty much a safe way to like do everything what we did within a few seconds or like a few minutes and save yourself time but yeah that was from me if you want to drop a like or subscribe do so uh, i'm not forcing anyone um if you need any help with anything or have questions feel free to join my discord group and just message me or open a ticket within the discord group and i will answer whenever i'm free